Esther heard a word that she hasn't heard in a while the other day. Someone was talking about being expecting. She was pregnant and pretty close to getting ready to give birth. I'm expecting, expecting. What a good word that is, expecting. Because the rockets had been launched. (laughs) And while she could not yet see or hear or smell or taste or touch the evolution of this that she was expecting, she was expecting it. She didn't need to see it and hear it and smell it and taste it and touch it in order to expect it, to expect it. And that's what we want to talk to you about. What are you expecting? What are you expecting? Because what you're expecting is what you're thinking and what you're thinking is how you're feeling and how you're feeling is what you're getting. It's what you're getting. And so what we just told you is really all that you'll ever need to know and actually all that we do know (laughs) because you're here just exploring the infinite avenues of the way that plays out for you over and over and over again your life helps you to choose and you get to choose and what you choose is important and the non-physical counterpart of you which we've been calling your inner being it's your Abraham it's all of us it's source energy is advocating constantly for what you have asked for but if you're an advocator by your attention to it if you are an advocator meaning attractor of the opposite of what you want then no one even your inner being not source no one can interfere with your point of attraction and give you something different than what you are asking for talk about free will talk about fair play talk about everybody getting what they want If you could just get everybody else out of your equation, if you could not worry so much about what they're doing or what they're thinking about what you're doing, or even more important, what you're thinking about what they're doing, if you could cease that huge level of resistant emitting, you would stop slowing the momentum of what you've asked for. And the timing of your thoughts turning to things would be so fast. And people would watch you and say, how are you doing that? Hey, hey, you're weird. You're weird. I barely hear you speak of something and it starts unfolding for you. What's going on? And you say, well, once I launch it, I expect it. Once I launch it, I expect it. What do you mean? Well, I expect it. I ask for it. And when I ask, it is given to me. I read the book. (laughs) When I ask, it is given. Well, how come when you ask, it's given? And when I ask, it isn't given? Well, maybe not yet. But I ask, and then I don't get in the way of it. I ask and then I don't throw sand on the trail. I don't really understand the laws of physics of this planet, you tell your friend. But I do know that there is a momentum that if I don't get in the way of it, it increases and increases and increases and increases and increases until it becomes so powerful that whatever it is that I have focused comes into being. And they said, 10 minutes ago, I told you we were weird, and now I'm certain that you are. (laughs) And you say, I accept that. I accept that. I'm not like most people. I'm not like most people because I ask. I wasn't always like this, you can tell them. I was like most people. I wanted things, and when I didn't have them, I was upset. But that didn't work out for me. It seemed like the more I felt needy or victim or poor or confused or lonely it just hung on and hung on and hung on it's like groundhog day over and over and over again I just kept living the same absence of what I wanted and then I got hold of a piece of clarity and I came to realize that how I feel is how I feel and I can't change it instantaneously but I can change it 
How I feel is how I feel. And I started noticing that how I feel is what I'm getting. I'm driving to work every day. And when I'm ornery, it's a miserable drive. Nobody's nice to me. Nobody lets me in. People splash mud on my car. The lights are not on and off, red and green in my favor. But when I'm feeling better, things just go better. And when you start connecting the dots that how you feel is how you feel and that's okay. But how you feel is what you get when you connect those dots and then you say, okay, I'll play your silly game, Abraham. I'll work on adjusting how I feel, but I don't really get it because how do you look at something totally not wanted and feel good about it? We're not asking you to do that. We're just asking you to be a better selective sifter at what you give your attention to. Choose more of the things that do feel good. Well, that seems lazy. Well, focus isn't lazy. Focus is mastery. Focus is deliberate creation. But Abraham, it seems so selfish. You want me to just run around and just focus upon things that I like and that I want? I'm not asking you to do that. Life is a mixed bag. There's a lot of people you care about that aren't doing that and you care about them and so you're watching them mess up their own life and you feel like you should be there for them. But connect the dots. How much does your commiserating with someone who's in a bad place, how much has that ever helped them? Think about it. You started out in a conversation and you meant, well, here I come to save the day. And then you drag yourself off later, <laughs> realizing that you tried, but you got nowhere because it's not your work to do. It's your work to demonstrate through the clarity of your example that you're getting really good at connecting the dots and that you care about it. And people who are paying attention to you begin to notice that you're mostly in a pretty good mood. And if you're not, you don't come to the party. And if you come to the party in a good mood and then you aren't in a good mood, you leave the party. You selfish person, <laughs> self-interested. That's what we are asking. People say to us, Abraham, we think you teach selfishness. And we say we do for sure. Because you can't see other than through the perspective of self. And when the self that is your human self hooks up with the self that is your non-physical source energy, inner being self, there is a Synergy isn't the right word, but it's the best one Esther can find because she doesn't have any scientific vocabulary. There is a connection between this vibration of you and this vibration of your inner being that is huge in its attraction power. And that's what we call non-resistant state of being. That's what we call the art of allowing. That's what we call step three of the equation. Step one, you ask. Life causes you to do that. Step two is source answers. Your inner being focuses on what you've asked for and the law of attraction gathers the cooperative components to what your inner being is focused upon. And your inner being never looks back at why you're asking or where you are in relationship to what you want. Your inner being always stays focused in a non-resistant way on what you want. And when you do step three, which is the same thing, expecting good outcomes then you start getting them and when you stand as that example in the world where sure you have some bad days but you don't stay in them and you don't wallow in them and you don't try to explain them to everybody and you don't blame everybody else for them and you don't stand in regret and you don't criticize and you don't whimper and whine and you don't give up all of your power which is connecting to your inner being you don't calibrate to other humans and try to find the group that will complain the most with you and join that group because it feels somehow comforting to be with the other miserable ones. You don't do that anymore because how you feel is how you feel and how you feel is what you get. So somewhere along here, you start deciding, I think I'm going to join the happier group. And what you find out is quite a bit of the time, that group is just you and you. <laughs> just you and you it's just you and you but it won't stay like that you let it be you and you feeling good and before you know it somebody else pops in hey 
<laughs> you know, oh, I didn't see you coming because it was a thought that turned to a thing and you didn't see it coming until you were ready to see it coming and there it is and boy did you feel it boy did you feel the resonance of that then don't talk too much about this with anybody let it be your private work nobody's standing in the same place you are about anything and when you need them to it's really easy to get into that place where you start calibrating you meet someone it felt so good BAM universe thank you thank you thank you What'd you say? <laughs> you like what? I'm sorry, we can no longer be friends. <laughs> Even though there's so much about that person that is completely resonant with you, you want that person to be defiant of this absolute. Every particle of the universe contains wanted and unwanted. What you want and absence of it. Don't ask it to change. That's true laziness. Instead, be selfish enough to want to feel good and find a way to feel good, no matter what anybody else is doing. We're not trying to get you to be more selfish. We want you to understand that you are, that you are self-aware. You only have the vantage point from your perspective. But when we say we want you to be self-aware and selfish, we mean we want you to blend yourselves the physical you and the non-physical you. We've been talking about how every thought that you think you still have access to. It's like you have a bag of marbles and every thought you've ever thought is in it. It's a really big bag and they're really little marbles, everything, but not all of them are active. You're not feeling around all of them, but when you feel that means you're active enough that you have a relationship between you and your inner being. In other words, if you feel something and you feel happy about it, that means that your bag of marbles right now, something's active in it, that's also active in your inner being's bag. And so that's what you're reaching for. That's what selfish is. Me deliberately activating something that my inner being has activated. And when the law of attraction calls me to that because I am now a cooperative component to this dominance of who I am. Well, that feels so good, doesn't it? Emotions are indicators. You could also call emotions manifestations. Your emotions are your first, see it here, it smell it, taste it, touch it, manifestation of alignment or discord. So when you feel an emotion, it's giving you important information. What we mean is you cannot ever really cut yourself off from your inner being. When you feel negative emotion, you've pinched yourself off pretty good, but you're not ever going to separate. Here in this physical body, you could get feeling terrible and it could get so bad that you just couldn't stay in your physical body anymore. And all of a sudden you'll be in full alignment with no resistance. You can't get away from your inner being. But when you're suffering, you're making a pretty good case to vibrate in a place that your inner being isn't which is usually because you've been observing physical stuff and trying to follow physical formats that other people have assigned to you without tuning into you. The more somebody is suffering, the more they encourage others to suffer. And the more someone is loving, the more they encourage others to love. And the more someone is having fun, the more they encourage somebody else to have fun. In other words, you don't encourage anything that you're not offering vibrationally. But all of that's neither here nor there. In other words, we don't mean for a minute that there's right and wrong going on there. We're wanting you to understand that you can be an observer of things or you can be an awareness of things. You can feel things that you can't see or you can just prudently and wisely and sufferingly and determinedly, you can just look at what is and 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 notice it and talk about it and compare it and complain about it and make rules about it. You can just keep looking at what is and in the process of that, you deny yourself all this motion, all this enthusiasm, all this energy that is calling you, that's suffering.